Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces.
to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at w Testing one, two, three. Oh my goodness. What in the world? What in the world, guys? Seems like I'm having some technical issues. It's going to take a moment to uh, <clears throat> make sure that I'm all caught up with you and everything. So it's been a while. It's been a couple weeks uh, since I've uh, been on. And uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out and uh, being with me. Tonight we're going to do a cool little project. We're going to make a Keurig cup holder um, type divider for a cabinet drawer uh, with some accessory uh, slots and everything. So uh, hopefully that'll be interesting to you. I don't know. But first of all, we got to get past um, our technical issues with our software. So we can get going. All right, it would help if we have audio, right? Right, it would help if we had audio. <laughs> Jesus, I wish I could cuss on YouTube. My goodness, oh, my goodness, my goodness. But uh, yeah, uh, next week we're starting with a new controller and uh, hopefully we're not dealing with this stuff anymore. All right. So anyway, <laughs> whoa, man, talk about going nuts. Okay, guys, tonight I've been away for a couple of weeks and everything, so we haven't had class for the last couple of weeks. And um, Ronnie, hopefully I'm not frozen anymore. Hopefully that will catch up to you in just a moment. But um, I figured, uh, you know, coming back, we do a small, simple little project. It's not going to be simple uh, as far as uh, design and everything, but uh, I'm going to take and go through and uh, uh, we're going to create it together. Basically, I um, and um, my girlfriend have a curd coffee maker that one day Alexa is going to run for us. When we say good morning, oh, Alexa is going to make some coffee and stuff. And we went out and bought some cool curd cups, and uh, mine, my favorite is the uh, Cinnabon uh, flavor and everything. And so, but these cups are all over the drawer, and you know, and we've got, uh, we've got tea bags, we've got little sugar packets, we've got everything all over the place, you know. So when you open the drawer, they just slide all around. So one of my projects that I've got to do uh, in the uh, coming week is I've got to make a nice little organizer. But it's not just going to be for the Keurig K cups. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, some individual tea bags that we'd like to be able to, you know, have in this storage container. 
We'd like to be able to take some of our little sugar packets and store them nicely. And we've also got some like the crystal light packets for our Kool-Aid and, you know, juice and stuff like that. Whatever. The, yeah, not necessarily Kool-Aid. That's a brand name. But, you know, for our juice and things. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to design and make uh, this uh, this nice little in drawer. It goes in our drawer, uh, you know, right underneath uh, the, uh, the coffee maker. Uh, this nice in drawer storage system and um, go from there. So uh, let me know, let's do a sound check, let's do an audio check, let's make sure we're all on board. Uh, you guys give me a yes if you can hear me and see me. It looks like I'm animated in my preview and stuff and we'll see what we can do about that. Um, so Lenny says that he can barely hear me. Uh, Sam says that she can hear me. So let's... Uh, make sure our audio levels are up let me see here which one's my audio level my microphone audio all right excellent and let me look at my capture device and make sure my audio capture device and make sure it's set correctly uh, for yeti excellent all right so uh, somebody said that the volume is very low. Let's uh, take a look here. Let's max that out as much as we can. All right. So Mike can barely hear me. Uh, Thomas says the video and sound is okay. Um, Kevin says the audio is low. So let's, let's kind of get a consensus here and see where we're at. All right, let's see where we're at. I'm gonna turn the volume up a little bit. Testing, one, two, three, let's go. All right, so we're good now. Everybody's good now. All right, <clears throat> excellent, that's awesome. All right, so perfect, perfect, great. Good, good. Everybody says that they can hear each other or hear me. Sweet. All right, let's go ahead and let's move over to our uh, software. I'm going to be working in Vetric VCar Pro tonight. And uh, these projects uh, that I do most of the time can be done in Desktop Pro and Aspire. Uh, tonight's project is no different. The only thing that's different is I will be using a program called SketchUp. SketchUp is a 3D CAD program, and I use the free version, uh, version 8 of SketchUp. If you guys are interested in learning SketchUp and everything, you can go to uh, jayscustomcreations.com, J-A-Y-S, jayscustomcreations.com, and on his SketchUp page, he has a download link for uh, SketchUp version 8 and some wonderful videos uh, that uh, will teach you how to use it. So I learned how to use SketchUp a few years back and everything, and I love it. But uh, we're going to be in SketchUp and we're going to lay out the preliminary design and, uh, you know, build the actual kind of three-dimensional in drawer design and stuff. And then we're going to uh, come over to Vetric. Uh, we're going to import uh, some of the parts, not all of them, but some of them. And um, then uh, we're going to finish it up. So like all the little curved cup holders and stuff, I'm going to do all that in Vetric. I'm going to build basically just the main uh, kind of uh, frame, you know. Wonderful, great, because it's gonna be very simple uh, in, uh, by design. So let's go ahead and let's get on over uh, to our drawing area here. Maybe. All right, let's change our window style here. We're gonna use our styles, and uh, I'm gonna change this to a engineering style. Give us a white, clean background. Uh, that way our mouse is easier to see. And uh, I will, uh, I'll leave the axis lines in for now and stuff. Um, that'll be good. All right, so let's kind of zoom in here. And ooh, move around, that's all crazy and stuff. Okay, so first off, uh, the drawer itself, the cabinet itself, is uh, 23 inches in length. 
and it's uh, 23 and a half actually, but I want, uh, I'm, I don't want my uh, organizer to like be a tight fit in there. I want it to be able to fit in and everything. So the drawer, but the inside dimensions of the drawer are uh, three and a half or 23 and a half inches by uh, I believe 16 and a uh, half, 16 and a half, I believe. And then that is uh, four inches deep. So I want to be able to, if I have to, for whatever reason, you know, I want to be able to, um, you know, take this thing in and out. And I'd like to be able to do it without having to take the drawer completely out of the cabinet. But if I do, I do. It all depends. Uh, you know, I'll do, I'll end up, uh, you know, um, seeing what, what comes up with. So on our uh, square size here, what I want, you know, for my base basically is I need to go. Uh, I'm going to go 23. I don't want to go the full 23 and a half and a comma and uh, I'm going to go by 16. Enter. Okay. That's going to give me this here. Now, the for the most part, the box is uh, the, the front of the box and everything is going to have dividers and all. So what you're seeing here is kind of kind of be the uh, base cover. So let me push pull this up, uh, and this is going to be uh, oh gosh, what do I want this one to be? It's going to be about a quarter of an inch, 0.25, and then on the front of my cabinet holder. So the curved part, it, there's going to be a lid. We're going to draw our holes and everything here in just a moment. But on the front part, I would like to have a divider uh, section that is, um, so consider this the bottom of the box here, and we're gonna start building up from here. But let's get my divider boards in. So I'm gonna start, and the material I'm gonna use is gonna be, um, I'm gonna plane it down to half inch thick uh, you know, just like cabinet material and everything. And so we're going to go enter and we're going to push pull this up. All right. So I've got a half inch base and my drawer is about four inches. I want to go three. I'm going to go 2.5. All right. Now I'm just drawing out a rough box and everything. Uh, to show you because I should be able to um, add these components in. There's going to be some rabbit and joinery and all of that stuff here in just a moment. As a matter of fact, let's do it the right way. Let's not do that. Let's come over here and let's draw all of our individual components so I can put the rabbit in and all that stuff. Uh, so we're going to go uh, 0.5 comma 2.5 enter. <laughs> You goofball, 2.5 is my height. What are you doing there, Laney? Uh, 0.5 comma 16, enter, there we go. And then my push pull is the two and a half, 2.5. All right, let me uh, chomp on that and make that a component, G for component. All right, on my base here, cause I am gonna have a base of the box, uh, you know, and even though the side frames here where the curved K cups are going to go in the back area, uh, they're going to be hollow and everything. But this front part is where all of my tea bags, crystal light packets, uh, sugar packets and everything are going to go. So we need to put a rabbit, a rabbit, rebit, rebit, rebate. Uh, let's go. Um, 16 by 0.25 and let's push this down. Matter of fact, P for push, and we're gonna push this down point one two five. There you go. That's gonna be the rabbit where this front piece is gonna go. So let's go ahead and move that and snap that in. Ha! Hold on a second. Let's grab my component here. Well, any spin around there, son. Spin around there. There we go. G for component. I thought I made that a component a moment ago, but uh, 
Let's go. Let's. G. Create. There we go. There we go. We're working now. Come on, sketch up. Don't make me look bad. My other software is doing a good enough job for that jet. <laughs> All right, let's get that in there and uh, snap that into place. All right. So, notice I got a little bit of an overlap here. What's up with that? Let me get my measurement out. Lord have mercy, Laney. That's a half inch. Escape. That's 9 16 escape. That's not a problem. Let's go. And let's push that in to there. All right. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Okay. Now, the sides, uh, the front and back. So let me get the back in here. Let me get the back in here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Go. 16, comma, 0.5, enter. Push, pull, push that down, 0.125, enter. Nicely done. I'm going to take this guy over here move him and I'm going to hold my control key to drag a copy and drop that there. Drop that there. Perfect. Let me get my uh, Google up in case you guys are asking questions and all. Um, can you type ad Jay's address? Sure, I sure can, uh, Brian. It is jayscustomcreations.com. jayscustomcreations.com. J-A-Y-S. All right, now, my crystal light packets, they are with, uh, you know, uh, roughly measuring them and everything. I'm going to say that they fall within uh, four inches. My tea bags, uh, the sugar packs, uh, the little sugar packets, and um, uh, the crystal light packets and everything, I, all of those fall within about four inches in length. They're the long, skinny type uh, packages and stuff. So that front area here, this front area here is going to be my individual dividers. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring a guideline in here into the mix of things. And I need that guideline um, to be, I'm going to go, if they're about, if they run in the four inch range, I don't, again, I don't want to be tight in there and stuff. I'm going to go five inches here and then I'm going to have a divider. Let's see here, 16 comma 0.5 enter the other way, control Z. I drew my, uh, the 0.5 has to go first, 0.5 comma by 16 enter nicely done and it would help if I would have been in my component when I did that all right let's push pull this down 0.125 enter okay so you should be able to see that and everything Nicely done. And I have this line here that doesn't belong. Wonderful. All right. So once again, I'm going to borrow this divider here. And uh, this divider that I'm about to move and hold down my control key, controls make a copy, and I'm going to snap it into here. This divider, when I make changes on one, it will create those changes on the other. When I make those changes on these two dividers, I do not want this other one that I copied, escape. Uh, I do not want this one to have those uh, divider grooves, put them in and everything because it is a copy of it. So I need to make this one unique. And so I'm getting a little lesson in uh, SketchUp, but this is not a SketchUp class. This is just, hey, we're laying out our design to bring into Vetric. All right, cool beans. So, kind of getting things going here. Now, 
For our sides, let's go ahead and uh, it doesn't matter which one I work in because when I make changes in it, it's going to update those changes in the other one. And so what I want to do is we're going to come in here with my rectangle tool. And this is a half inch, so I'm going to go three. Uh, yeah, I'll go a quarter. Quarter of an inch. And let's push this back by 0.5. Okay. Now notice that this part here, notice this part here, the rabbit when it was created was created on the same side as uh, the other part because they're identical, right? So what I need to do on this part here, I need to make sure that I flip it and I need to flip it along my, oops, not my green component, along my blue component. Along my red line, sorry, not my, my red, I'm sitting there staring right at my red line. And, uh, but I need to flip it along my red line and uh, this part's gonna be rabbited in. So let's go ahead and now I've got to get, um, let's get this one uh, cleaned up. Oh my goodness. This will make sense here in a moment. Push pull that down. Oops. And let's get rid of these lines. All right. Nicely done. Okay. We're going to repeat, rinse and repeat on the other side. Let's close this down. And of course, there's all kinds of ways to draw in here. I'm just kind of building one component at a time. Um, yeah. All right. I don't want to push pull yet. I want a rectangle tool, ladies and gentlemen. All right. We're going to go half inch push pull. Let's push that in 0.5. Nice. Let's get out of that and let's go into our rectangle tool. Snap to this here and uh, let's undo that. Always open your component up so you can draw it, especially if you've made it a group. Uh, that makes the most sense later. All right, let's go push pull and let's push this down. Get out of that tool and delete those two lines. It's going to create a little rabbits, you know, for our uh, ends and everything. So now while I'm on this side, I'll go ahead and uh, get my uh, rectangle drawn here to close that off and just spin around here and I will push pull. Push pull means I'm extruding. So I'll just extrude that out to make that um, side. And let's control Z. Let's get this extruded. Sweet. Okay, so that's that box side. Let's go ahead and ah, that's what happened, ladies and gentlemen. Bear with me a second. Do not draw. Make sure you close your component before you draw another component, or it's going to tie those together. And that's what I. That's exactly what I did when I drew my rectangle here. Uh, it made it part of the base, which I don't want. It's a completely separate uh, component. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that it's a it's isolated. And then I can take this component and move it, grab this corner here and just hold that control key down and snap to there. You smelling what I'm cooking so far? Yeah. Now, what's most likely going to happen is <clears throat> we're going to change this up in a minute. Uh, it would be stupid for me to have these two little uh, sides here 
uh, just running here, right? And then having this open in the back. Uh, you know, uh, it would probably make sense to just close it off all the way down and then have this divider, you know, uh, rabbit or, you know, tenon into, or, you know, the mortise and tenon into uh, the two side pieces. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's come back out here, right? So the things you notice when you're sitting there going, wait a minute, if I were building this on my table saw, if I were, you know, cutting these parts out. Would I do it that way? And I'm going to be cutting the parts out on the CNC. So no, I wouldn't do it that way. All right. So what I need to do is I need to come in here and first off, let me do this. Let me move this up and then go into it. And we're going to take <clears throat> and go 2.5 comma 0.5 enter push pull pull this back 0.5 of an inch whoa not 0.5 laney 0.25 enter all right and then we're on the other side we're going to do the same thing our rectangle tool 2.5 comma 0.5 enter push that back 0.25 enter there we go sweet we're going to go ahead and get out of that isolation uh, on that part and we're going to come in and move this back into place get that back into place there Oh, I missed it. Missed it by a mile. Move. Let's snap to there. There we go, buddy. All right. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to take this part because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be uh, rabbiting this in. So this part's actually going to get uh, pushed back like that. And then this part... is going to go the whole long distance we should go all the way okay all right beautiful 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 all right notice my rabbit's gone that's because it's gone in here uh this part is now this piece here is going to be uh made unique Meaning I, I don't, I can't have it the same as this because this one does get a little rabbit on the end. But this one here, this one here, I'm going to hide this. I'm going to be deleting that divider line right there because it doesn't belong anymore. And this part is going to be, ra uh, you know, God, it, uh, mortised tin and den whatever i lost my it's been so long since i've been away from woodworking i can't even remember my own terminology guys and girls gosh it's terrible uh, but we're going to pull this out an additional quarter of an inch on this side and we're going to go ahead and somebody help me out with that uh terminology there because i just got stupid literally whoa don't do that ladies and gentlemen All right, so on this part here, I need to extend this rabbit. I know that much. Jeez Louise. That's terrible. I got to get back to...
basics almost with my terminology. If you're wondering what in the heck I'm doing, so am I. Let me hide this guy. He's in my way right now. And uh, let me get this. My rectangle is not wanting to draw. Win, lose, or draw, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, sorry about that, guys. My uh, <clears throat> my rectangle tool was kicking my kicking my tail. All right, let's push pull this down, and let's get rid of that line there, that line there, and then let's unhide our two components. That one and unhide all. Okay, so now on this side, I gotta hide this guy and I gotta fix my stuff over here. So let's go in here and go push pull, push this back 0.25, push this forward to match that, get rid of the dividing line, CBL, there we go. Lenny, you're acting like you know what you're doing now. Don't y'all love the commentary? All right, let's go ahead and let's draw our rectangle. Let's go ahead and snap to here. Square up. And it needs to be I don't know why my rectangles are wanting to uh, So that's 16 and 7 sixteenths. Uh, 16. 5.5. Ta-da! All right, we're almost done with the main thing. Let's get rid of, whoa, let's not get rid of that. Oh, you goofball. Look at that little square left. Let's delete that line and delete that line. Boy, I was all over the place with this one. <clears throat> a little nub sticking out there. Does that mean I have a little nub sticking out on this side? No. No. Okay. So let's go ahead and unhide that, that last piece. Oh. All right. So this is going to be my uh, basic cabinet and everything here. And so what I want to do is... I want to uh, draw a line right down here. Space bar to finish that line off. I want to draw a line right down here. Space bar to finish that off. Wonderful. The reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to hide this piece right here. That's just going to give me an outline. Uh, of course, I had the outline down here as well. That's going to give me an outline to uh, create my little rabbit so I can push that back 
0.25 inches. Sweet. Oh, that looks good. We're going to hide those axes in a minute. And you see, because this was a copy on the other side, it's duplicated to what's happening over there. So I just need to make sure I flip this one. Now, the last one I flipped along the red. This one will get flipped along the green uh, because it's running along. It's basically running along the green axis here. All right. So now with all of my joinery and everything done on those, the main box, the main box, I can go ahead and unhide that last piece. And so this top part here, this back part, let's, well, let's focus on the current cup holder part for a second, for a second, for a second. This part here uh, is going to be, first of all, let me draw a line right down the smack dab middle. And on this one here, let me draw a line right down the middle. Zoom in if it don't let you get to the middle. And on this part, I'm going to have a top on here that is a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to pull this up. I need that line gone right there. No, no. Delete that. Oh, you son of a gun. Notice when I deleted that, it um, killed my joint here. And that's all fine and dandy. Because... This line is going to get straight across there and a small little box here. Fill that in. Okay. Now, my lid, I, I'd like to have the edges of my lid I'd like to rabbit because the CNC is going to do all this. So I can cut all these rabbits pretty easily and stuff. But on this uh, part here, we're going to push this down 0.25 inches. And I would like all the way around a rabbit to be 0.25 inches all the way around. So let's go ahead and get this line drawn in. And push this down 0.25 inches because all of these components are going to get pulled over to uh, once we're done all of the components are going to get pulled over to Vetric and I'd like to have all the joinery and everything made and so I should be able to now come in here on this one push pull this down to here sweet Get rid of this line and not that one. Sweet. Get rid of this line and that one. So now I have a basic, uh, all the nice proper rabbits uh, drawn in my part for my lid. It's going to have all my curric holes and everything for my lid to sit into, glue and screw into. Da -da -da. So you guys are getting buffering. All right, if you guys are getting buffering, let me know. All right, let's turn off our axes because I do not have any skipped frames over here.
and everything is looking fluid on this side. I had some issues in the beginning, but let me know. We'll look into it again, but uh, everything... Let me look at... Uh, yeah, on my YouTube screen, you, watching on YouTube, because I'm watching YouTube now, I'm not seeing the little buffering wheel, because when I see it, that's when you guys have it, and it is from me. It is from me. I'll take it on that one, because it is me. All right, let's go ahead and come in and snap a rectangle along there. Wonderful. And let's push pull this rectangle up 0.25 inches. And let's go ahead and triple click on this. No, not like that, Laney. Get out of that tool first, then triple click on this and make this a component. So that way I can move this down because it's going to sit flush gonna be glued in there then now I got to do my dividers so I'd like to depending on uh, what my girl decides uh, most likely we're gonna have tea bags on one side we'll do the uh, sugar packs and the crystal light strip and we may have another slot for tea bags on the other side for a different flavor or what have you or we may you know vice versa what you know one two three so let's lay out some measurements some guidelines and let's say that uh, you know our first two and a half that'll be one divider and then from there uh, our crystal light packets aren't that uh, big but we'd like to have a couple of you know rolls we don't want just one little stack of them so let's see if we can go to 2.5 on that one, 2.5 on that one, and then a wider one, we're going to go 4, and this should end up with 3.5. So uh, let's go 3 and 3 quarters, let's move this back, um, let's move this one back a 0.25. And let's delete this one. And let me measure this again. Make sure I should be at, uh, yeah, three and three quarters from there and three and three quarters from there. Now, <clears throat> this is going to be, uh, I'm going to use a little quarter inch uh, wood, you know, uh, plywood, what have you, uh, for, my, for the dividers. And so these measurements, I will basically uh, use this as my center line. Those are my center measurements and everything. And so I'll have three smaller compartments uh, for um, my, the bigger compartments will probably be for the tea bags, the two different flavors, because I believe they're, they're good sized tea bags. I haven't got a measurement on those. Then my crystal light packets uh, and sugar packets. And since I drink a lot of sugar, uh, two of those will be for that and then one for the crystal light packet. <laughs> I don't know. We haven't decided how that's going to get set up yet. But um, so what I need to do is basically 0.125 from there, point, uh, hit the escape key, 0.125 from here. That's going to be one divider. Point one two five, and then one more. Oops. Point one two five, and point one two five. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's take. And I think what I'm going to do is 
my base. I think my dividers are not just going to sit flush on the base. You know, they're going to sit. Um, they're going to go into both sides here, and it's going to go down into a groove down here. Uh, that's the only smart way to do it. So I'm going to hide the bottom for a moment. Woo, infinity those guys go to. And let me draw on these rectangles here. We're going to go one. Let's not draw in the rectangle just yet. First of all, before you go drawing in your rectangle, open up the component so you can draw in it there, son. All right. So that's one, two, three, and four. Let's go ahead and uh, push pull this. And let's go, I don't need it to be that deep. So just enough for a little bit of a glue contact and everything. Um, so I will go, uh, see here, 0 0.0625, because what we have to remember is, you know, there's a rabbit on the other side of this, so it's going to be kind of thin in here, so I don't want to go too deep with that. So just a sixteenth of an inch, just enough to get my little, um, uh, little piece of plywood in there and glued in and stuff, all that wonderful jazz. Okay. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Now, to cheat, to cheat, because I don't want to sit there and have to draw all those guidelines and stuff again, 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 uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this. What? Of course I'm going to delete that. And then I'm just going to hit, hold my control key down um, on this guy right here. Move him and move him down. We'll get him into position in just a moment. We're going to flip him along the red axis. Right? Right. That's right. All right. And then I'm going to go in here. I'm going to push-pull this back up to full height. And then I'm going to push-pull this. Oops, not yet. Not going to push-pull that yet. I need to get out of there because i got to move this. There's my center line right there. Uh, so I want to grab that center line and snap it to there. Now I can go ahead and jump back in there. Why draw what you can copy, right? All right. Now, see what I'm doing here? Forgot to make it unique. Make unique. That means make it its own thing. Right. Push pull. Are you still going? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. All right. So it's already made unique, but I got to draw a line. Draw a line in the sand right down the middle. That way, that way, let's try that again. That way when I push pull, it only does that end. Like that. Like that. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right, let's get on the other side here. Let's get this cleaned up. All right, let's get this cleaned up here. So let's go push pull and let's see what we got going on here. I need a line, I need a divider line. And I can push this back to down. All right, so, ooh doggy. Looking pretty. Now I can get rid of all my guidelines. So I'm going to come down here and uh, select all those and hit delete. Delete. And then I can go ahead and unhide my bottom piece. Unhide. All right. 
And all I have to do now is just transfer those rabbits, rabbits, rebates, over. Let me get, uh, let me get into position. Ooh, this is gonna be tricky, Laney. Am I in my rectangle tool? All right, stand by. Let me get over here. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to draw a rectangle, folks. All I need is a line. All I gotta do is connect from there to there. From here to here. Oops. Well, it would help if you actually snapped the line there, son. Let me get back over there. From here to there. Work with me, Junior. Work with me. Snap from there to there. There we go. And then I can push pull this. And again, I don't need to go very deep. So I'm just going to go. Uh, this is my bottom is a quarter inch bottom. So I'll probably just do that same uh, 16th of an inch. So let's push that down 0.0625. You know, and um, yeah. Yep, yep. And let's see what we got going on here. Is that a cavity? That's a cavity. You'll see what I just created right there. Okay. So basically, I'm going to have those divider, you know, lines. And I got to fix over here. And get rid of that line. Okay, so that rabbit's got to go all the way into that groove, nice and pretty like that. I know this black and white's hard to see sometimes and stuff, but um, yeah, it's hard to see sometimes. All right, let's go ahead and let's uh, let's snap. Come on now, snap, snap, you son of a gun, snap. All right, let's push pull that down 0 0.0625. Let's pull that up to there. And that's already pulled up because it's the whole base. So let's delete that and delete that. Wonderful. So now I should be able to just draw my lines and the base, uh, you know, I don't need to now match everything. Okay, snap to there to there, there to X marks the spot there, push pull that, that 16th of an inch, uh, get rid of that line and that line, make it a continuous flow, and last but not least, Snap. X marks the spot and push pull that one down. And then last but not least, get rid of that line and that line. So if we look uh, what we've done here, let me let's take this part, let's take the lid here and let's hide it. Let's turn this sideways here. Let's take this side piece here and these two pieces here. We'll leave that one over there. And let's hide that. All right. And you see I got a nice little cute little line right there. That can get you go bye bye. But basically I've got these little grooves here. Right. Let's hide this one too. So my, ba oh, we got a little line right there. Must have drawn two. 
But um, so my bottom plate, when I'm uh, grooving it and everything, it's going to have those groove lines and stuff. And so um, that's all going to get milled. And when we import this in, that's all going to get milled on the CNC. All of these, and let's hide this one too. So my base plate is going to get milled a 16th of an inch down all the way. And uh, so all of the uh, rabbits, let's, let me come in here. I got a line right there. Delete that line and that line. Those little line segments, they'll get you. And so now I can go ahead and let's uh, unhide everything. Edit. Edit. Unhide all. Okay. And let's go ahead and draw in our... Is it me? Are those damn grooves look like they're going at an angle? Or is that just an optical delusion? There's only one way to find out. Let's measure. If they're wrong, I'll fix them in uh, Vetric. All right, three and three eighths. I can already tell that's wrong because that's three and three quarters. Three and five eighths. So, how in the hell did I draw? So our dividers are going to be angled, John. That's why it's crooked. Um, <laughs> why is it crooked? That's crazy. All right, so here. Got to love that undo button, right? So uh, alternate backspace is our undo button. So alt backspace. Okay. Now, these guys, let's find out. Let's find out what's uh, what happened here. I think it's going to be this front piece that threw me off, of course. So, but I'm going to take a measurement from here to here, and that gives me a guideline. And then all I have to do, all I got to do, is come into this component here and move it and snap this edge to that guideline. And then I just got to fix the end out here so let's spin her around sorry about all the spinning let me go slow so yeah my part was off a little bit there um so we'll push pull or we'll uh we'll we'll uh what will we do what will we do we're gonna hide this piece uh we're gonna push pull this back Okay, and uh, this guy here, uh, he gets push pulled back to you. Um, to there. Okay, and now I should be able to unhide that part, and my groove should now line up, and that means I got to fix this end. Got to fix this in. So we'll push this back out to here. And we'll push this back to here. And problem resolved. So all we got to do now is take a quick moment. And uh, redraw these lines. And I'm just going to do it quickly. I'm not going to talk. Well, I'll talk a little bit. We'll talk some smack. We'll answer some questions while I'm doing it. If y'all have any questions, ask them away. John, that was a good question. Why is it crooked? That was a very good question. It was because my board was off uh, by a whole bunch. And, uh, yeah. Got to 
fix my two ends here. Then I can delete this line, just like that. Now I should only have to draw, I sh that's the first and only one I should have to done that way. Now I should be able to just draw my lines, snap, snap. And then we're about ready to import this thing into Vetric. We'll do our Kerg holes and everything in Vetric. All right, let's um, uh, push, pull that down a 16th of an inch. Yeah, man, I thought I was, I thought I was, uh, seeing things. I thought it was an optical delusion. I was like, wait a minute. Come on, give me that X. X must be spot. Come on, give me the X. There we go. Jay would be disappointed in the way I'm drawing tonight. He'd be like, man, I didn't teach that stuff. Making me look bad, boy. Nah. If you guys want to learn SketchUp, Jay's CustomCreations.com. I have to give him a shout out. He does awesome stuff. All right, so 0.0625, push that down, get rid of that line and that line. There we go. That looks more square. Yeah. All right, now the easy part of this is um, all I have to do is I'm going to take a measurement from down here, from down there to up here. And it's two and seven sixteenths, right? Two and seven sixteenths. And so I'm just going to take and uh, draw a rectangle over there and push pull that rectangle over to here. I'm gonna make this its own. Oh, don't do that, Laney. Uh, control Z let me undo that first of all let's get out of this component you don't want a component open when you're drawing another one because it'll attach them together it'll attach them together let me get down in this corner here all right now I can push pull that so there I can triple click on this one and make it its own component and then all I have to do is move hold down my control key and drag this to here drag this one to there and drag that one to there keep that control key held down all right that's gonna be my little dividers in the front Y'all still with me? I put you to sleep yet? All right. Yeah, John. Uh, uh, I, I I peek over, not peek over, but I look at the the chat and all, and that's why I saw your question. Why it's crooked? Just go, hey, 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 stop, stop, stop! It's crooked, and uh, that'll how that's how you get my attention. Um, it's too bad there's not a little ding button, like a ding, little alert, like hey. Um, all right, so. Everything is good here. Now, of course, throughout the whole back, now just so you know, just so you know, the um, Kerg cups, the K cups, the uh, they are one and three quarters, one and three quarters, uh, the holes, uh, the openings and all need to be one and three quarters. So if I did a radius of um, 0.75, and 0.75 is one and a half. So that should be 0.875, right? On a radius? Is that right? One, 
point seven five divided by two. Am I that am I that ignorant that I don't know what a what an inch and three quarters divided by two is? And I'm teaching this stuff. Oh my God! Hold on a minute. <laughs> I'm not a millennial either. I should be able to do this without a calculator. One point seven five divided by two is point eight seven five. All right. There we go, the radius of 0.875. And then if I push pull this out, um, well, first of all, it won't, let's, let's, when you, again, let's undo this, edit, undo, push pull and edit, undo circle. When you're gonna go draw on something, uh, get into that, com that something's component. And so 0.875, Lord have mercy. And, uh, you know, we're gonna push pull that 0.25, right? And we're gonna end up having us not, not that close to the edge, right? Look at there, Laney. What are you doing there, son? Uh, I'm just picking a random spot just to draw a hole for a minute, guys. We're not. They're, we're gonna lay this out perfectly where I want them in Vetric. And so, uh, but uh, the holes, that <laughs> thing. All right, ignore that uh, lip right there of that board on the side. But the holes are one and three quarter inch diameter for your curd K cups. If any of you have a curd, you're gonna end up building this. And what I'm gonna end up doing is, you know, we're gonna have rows and columns, you know, throughout this lid. So that when this lid gets imported in, I'm gonna make sure that I uh, take in account my quarter of an inch and quarter of an inch off the edges. I gotta be a quarter of an inch off all edges so I don't run into the edge like that, right? And then I'm gonna lay out and space them accordingly to where I get quite a few cups out of this, you know, holders out of this and everything. And of course, more holes for the Cinnabon than the other. That's what's important, right, Sam? If she's, Sam's usually supporting me and she's usually watching these classes, but it's all about what she wants, right? Okay, so that's our that's our little cabinet minus the Keurig K cup holes, and so with that we're gonna go ahead and import that into Vetric, and we're gonna lay out our tool paths. We're gonna show you how to create these tool paths, and uh, uh, cut out these parts, do some nesting, and all that wonderful stuff. Sorry about uh, taking you through this long journey of SketchUp, and 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 believe me, I'm not a, I'm not a proficient expert in SketchUp. I'm not I'm not you know. Um, and I'm not an expert at anything. You know what an expert is? It's a has-been drip under pressure. Expert, right? Has-been under pressure. <laughs> drip under pressure. Okay. Uh, uh, so I'm not an expert in anything. But um, the uh, base uh, box here and everything, I wanted to be able to draw it up in 3D so you could see it. Uh, if I would have drawn everything up and all the stuff and everything, I would have been drawing squares and circles and things in Vetric, and you wouldn't have been able to really see the 3D assembly of the project. So I wanted to be able to do it in here, but by no means am I an expert on SketchUp. This could have been done much quicker uh, and easier uh, if we would have drawn all the individual side pieces, drawn the panel, put the rabbits in, and then put it all together, right? So it could have been done much easier throughout SketchUp and everything, but I'm not you know, 100% uh, um, uh, proficient in it. So let's go ahead and, I didn't save anything yet, so let's go File, Save As, and I'm gonna call this my um, K-E-U-R-I-G Keurig Organizer. We'll just call it that, ain't gotta be, you know, perfect. And that's gonna be in my documents. Now I can go ahead and get out of this software Matter of fact, I'm gonna close it all together uh, so that way there's no lag or anything. I'm gonna close it all together. All right, so now we're down to uh, the project here and all of this can be done as a one-sided project except for, except for my center piece uh, on the, uh, that side rail has grooves on the front and the back. Well, I'm, not, I'm gonna still do it as a single-sided part uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up cutting uh, that uh, top rabbit and stuff. I'll just end up cutting that on the router table or something because it's only one cut and, and everything. And I don't want to have to flip the part and try to clamp it and all just for that one little cut. If you don't have tools like 
um, you know, uh, router tables or routers or, 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 or table saws or anything like that. Uh, a handsaw, draw a line, handsaw, cutting, we're cutting, that we would be cutting down that quarter of an inch, you know, along that line. And then we would be cutting, you know, uh, a quarter of an inch over to create that rabbit on the top of that middle piece. And you'll see where I'm talking about in just a moment and, and everything. But, you know, it could be done on a handsaw, but also you could do a two-sided part and flip that one piece over. Uh, for sure, but uh, my Keurig overall, the the whole part was 23 inches, and I'm going uh, edge to edge, uh, you know, with this. So I'm going to go 23 on my width, and my uh, height uh, was 16, 16, and um, my parts are a half inch thick. All of my parts are half inch thick, so I'm going to be working with that now. Am I going to uh, am I going to be cutting all these parts out? And the reason why I drew this box like this, uh, all of my sides and everything, they are two and a half inches tall, right? So most likely, all of my parts are going to get cut out of a um, one by six, you know, or one by four, even one by four. They're going to get milled and stuff out of a one by four. So we'll draw that up in a moment. But right now. This is going to be my base. And I said 0.5 and it should be 0.25. This is going to be my base and my lid, right? My base is going to get all those grooves uh, in the bottom. And then my lid's going to get all the curd cut K cup holes and stuff. And all that wonderful jazz. And then, um, then all my individual parts. I could bring them in and nest them here, but I'm not going to, uh, you know, this, uh, I'm going to most likely. Uh, other than the base and the top, uh, I'll probably use like an oak plywood or something. That's why I wanted to enclose that top in those rabbits and everything. Because I'm most likely going to use like an oak or nice wood or something, you know, a hardwood. I'm not going to use uh, sheet good for this. So we're going to kind of, this, this particular single project here is going to be the lid and the base. And then we're going to make an appropriate board size to cut our parts out of, our other parts and stuff out of. Okay. All right. So our uh, lid and base, uh, the material is a quarter of an inch thick on those. Uh, I will be registering off the machine bed um, because I will be cutting the holes out of the uh, lid. So I'll have a wasteboard. And when I work off the machine bed for that Z0 position, that means my wasteboard is my zero position. Okay. I, I touch off on my wasteboard. And because all of my projects register to a fence, a 90 degree fence on my table, I start and I work my XY datum is set to the bottom left corner. Okay, bottom left corner. You know, if this is your first time watching me, uh, you can start from any of the four corners of your material or from the center uh, for your XY datum, your starting point, your home position, however you want to term it. Uh, but um, because my boards go into a fence, uh, they will register off the bottom left corner. So we're going to go ahead and click OK here. And we're going to import. First thing we're going to do is we're going to import a vector. And that vector is going to be our, uh, our uh, little organizer that we just drew up. So we're going to go into our desktop. And in our desktop, we're going to go down to the K's. I could just type in Kurg in the uh, uh, little guy down here. Kurg, K, E, it's the line up above. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kurg, organizer. It was in documents, not desktop. I'm used to throwing everything on my desktop. All right, when we open this now, uh, Vetric is going to say, okay, hey, we got a couple things to ask you here. There's a total of 11 parts that are getting brought in. Uh, do I want an exploded flat layout? Yes, I do. You know, if this was something that required uh, me to have the front of the board brought in, the side of the board, and the top of the board, then I would do a three view import, right? But this is a flat layout. It's all the fl uh, flat parts or flat layout. And uh, the largest face is the top face, or do I want to orientate it by color? I'm going to auto orientate largest face by the top face. If by chance it didn't bring my parts in correctly, which these are 2D vectors, so it doesn't matter. 
But if for some reason it didn't, if I was doing a different side view or whatever, I could paint in SketchUp one surface, the main surface that I need face up uh, on all my surfaces and uh, it would import those. There'd be a drop down menu and stuff. But I don't need that. Now, where there are uh, polygons, you know, for arcs and things like that, which I don't have any, uh, but Vetric will create circles for those, you know, those arcs and all nice radiuses and things. And then fit arcs to boundaries and stuff. Uh, I just leave them blank. <clears throat> now, I do have components, right? I made each of those parts their own component and stuff. And so I want to group those imported parts together. And I want to keep components <coughs> uh, together as well. Because if I had components for like a drawer, a lid, a top, a bottom, this and that, I'd want it to import them kind of somewhat organized and stuff. So those two boxes are checked. That's my default settings. So when we click OK, all of our parts come in, right? So I've got my base is here. I've got my lid, which we're going to be, you know, the lid is going to, we got to get draw our holes for our Keurig. These are the four little uh, dividers for where the tea bags and the crystal light cups and all that are going to go. Uh, I've got my left and right side, my front or my back, sorry. Uh, and this is my front and back. And remember on one side of this, there's another rabbit. I'll end up doing that on a router table on this piece. And if you're under, if you're wondering which one I'm kind of referring to, uh, let's go ahead and real quick, let's pop back into SketchUp and let me, I know, I know some of you, but some are like, what is he talking about? But just in case you are, let's, let's real quick, bring it back in. File, Keurig Organizer. On this part, if I take and hide, hide these. On this part here, nice, my rabbit disappeared. Uh, this is supposed to be, which it doesn't matter, uh, the, um, this is supposed to be a 0.25. All right, on this part here, there's this rabbit and then there's grooves on the other side. So technically it's a two-sided part, right? Well, I'm gonna be cutting the grooves on the side, but I'll just end up cutting that rabbit. I'll put a quarter inch end mill in my router table and I'll just cut that rabbit very quickly and easily. If you don't have things like a router or a router table and all, what I was talking about about the handsaw is you could draw a line, uh, you know, straight down and you could cut down and then cut over and you could remove that corner piece, right? And then clean it up maybe like a little uh, chisel or something or what have you. If you're into hand tools and all that stuff or if you have hand tools, um, you could do all kinds of things, uh, but um, uh, you could do it as a two-sided part in Vetric. Uh, but I don't want to flip and, and, and worry about alignment pins and all that stuff just for a simple rabbit that I can cut on a router table. Uh, you know, I want I want to cut these grooves and everything. That's the part I was referring to, ladies and gentlemen. So, all right. All right. And this is that part there. How do I know this is that part there? Because that part is shorter than my end piece, right? Because my end piece has the two rabbits on the end, right? Righto. Now, these parts here at this current state and time do not matter, right? They do not matter. Right now, we are focusing in this particular project with this particular job setup. We're focusing on two parts right here, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create two layers. Uh, well, actually, I already have a layer here called layer zero. I might as well just rename this one. Rename, which I'm already in there. And I'm gonna call this my uh, top. And I might as well take advantage of that one and rename that and call this my base. Right? So I've got two layers, my base and my top. And so my top here, the, the part that's going to be my top, I'm just going to right click, right click, and I'm going to move that to my top layer. And this guy here, I'm going to select it and move that to my base layer. Okay, so that way I can turn the top off for now because I'll start with the base, right? We'll start with the base. It's all about that base, about that base. All right, let's get it centered up. Right now, Sam's shaking her head going, what in the world am I doing with this boy? 
Okay. So pretty simple and straightforward, right? Looks like, you know, we're going to have a router bit running and, you know, cutting this groove and all that wonderful stuff, right? Well, first of all, we need to make sure that we use an appropriately sized router bit uh, so we don't have to uh, change things out. But also, if I use these vectors here as, uh, you know, my pocket area to cut these grooves out, then it's not going to overlap. It's not going to get past this line. So it's not going to give me a nice clean edge out here. So we got to do a little bit of redrawing, a little bit of adjusting and stuff. I need this bit uh, to be able to kind of go over this line a little bit to give me a nice clean outer edge so I don't have little fuzzies and all that stuff around and everything. And now as far as these grooves, no, that's, that's just that outside pocket. I need to worry about this outside vector. So it's grouped together right now. So I'm going to go into ungroup, which is the fifth icon under edit objects, first row. And my boundary here, my boundary here, all I want to do is just make it a little bit larger, a little bit larger, uh, so that my router bit can overlap that edge of the board. Now, also, make sure if your board is bigger, like if you like, you know, I don't want it to be the exact size of what I'm cutting because I got to think about where I'm going to put my clamps and all that stuff and everything. For me, I'm just going to use two or three strips of double side tape. Uh, this is a very small part. It's a very simple 16th inch deep rabbit. Should only take like a minute or two to carve, if that. Uh, so double side tape is going to be the way to go for me. And um, so my router bit, I'm not worried about, I'm not worried about my router bit hitting anything. Now, I have a 90 degree fence, you know, on my, on my CNC table, right? I got a fence. It's only like an inch wide or something, but I got a fence where these two parts are. Well, when that router bit's pocketing, I absolutely, absolutely do not want it cutting into my fence, right? Oh, that would be brutal. Uh, I'd have to make them again. So I will be using on my setup, when I double side tape this down, I will be using spacers between my board and my fence and everything. And once I get that part double side taped down, I'll remove those spacers and that will give clearance. So when my router bit is cleaning up this pocket here, that it is not, is not cutting into my fence. Okay important if you got any kind of setup like that don't don't give yourself some room or else you're going to have a nice little groove right here you know along your fence line that's your straight edge that's your reference point you don't want to screw that up all right so uh there's two ways i could size this guys and girls i could take and double click it and put it in transform mode i could hold down my shift key and i could just pull this out and it'll pull it out equal distantly all the way around and i could pull it out a slight amount however much i want to overlap um, I just want a small amount. Just want that bit to be able to go past that edge, right? Or I could have went into my size tool over here. Uh, under It's under the transform objects menu, the second icon. And I could have just come in and adjusted and made the size. You know, whatever it may be. Either one, I could have just, you know, increased it slightly or what have you. All I care about is that I have an overlap. And that's the only one that I have to resize. So now I can come in and create my pocket toolpath. So we're going to go ahead and uh, switch over to the toolpath side here. And I'm going to select all of my vectors. And it's going to be a pocket toolpath. The depth of cut is going to be a 16th of an inch. And I'm going to use um, my grooves in between are a quarter of an inch. So a quarter of an inch end mill will fit. Um, so I should be able to uh, easily use my quarter inch end mill there because I should have a quarter of inch space. We can validate that if I come in and measure from here to here. Should be a quarter of an inch, right? And so therefore, my quarter inch bit should fit in there nicely, nicely. So quarter inch end mill, let me select all my uh, parts again. Let's go ahead and, uh, by the way, your dimension is a bitmap. Uh, if you accidentally have a dimension set and you try to calculate 
there's no suitable vectors. It will not carve the dimensions in your project, right? If you have blueprint dimensions, you know, that you draw with the dimension tool uh, and stuff, uh, you it will not carve those. It's considered like a bitmap image and you can't create a toolpath on a bitmap image. So if I would have had this selected and then my, you know, my measurement was selected as well, when I calculate this, um, it's not going to carve the 0.25, right? But look at what's happening here. First of all, I do not want, let's go back in there and change my settings here. I want to offset cut, not raster. I don't want to be doing that back and forth, back and forth. That's crazy. I want to do an offset cut. Um, I want to calculate that toolpath. And uh, there you go. Notice uh, when I did my, when I had this as a raster, right? And everything, those center pieces, it wouldn't cut because it just can't, there's no movement there. They're exactly one quarter of an inch wide. So uh, on this cut, it's going to be a raster that round and round and round. Uh, as it's going round and round, then we're going to come in here and, um, you know, uh, bring that in. Now on this, uh, you know, on that 16th of an inch deep, uh, I could put a ramp. I could put a very small ramp um, uh, on this. It's only one pass. So I really don't need to. It's, it's too shallow of a cut. On deeper cuts, I would do a, 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 a ramp. Uh, and stuff but we could uh, ramp and then if we did it would go a 32nd and a 32nd then it would go around and just carve all the parts out and stuff right there'd be really one ramp in there so we could do that we could do a one inch ramp and uh, it'll give us our uh, little ramp starting point okay okay all right so now Let's take a look at this cut. Let's preview the selected toolpath. Okay, that's it. That's my base. Now, if I would not have offset that outer rectangle a little bit, then my edge, the bit wouldn't have been able to get to the edge and you would have seen fuzzies and all that stuff in your preview and everything. And all we want that bit to be able to give a nice clean edge so we want it to overlap at some so all we had to do is oversize that outer rectangle only now looking at the runtime on this i mean the runtime on this is um you know on that pocket and all is 13 minutes something like that so at my current speeds and everything so it should only take just a few minutes to do right 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 and everything and so yeah I could actually I'm taking a sixteenth of an inch I could actually increase my speed a little bit sixteenth of an inch uh, it's plywood I could actually bring that up to 60 and cut that down a little plunge I don't, I'm ramping and everything so I can increase my plunge as well and uh, we'll bring this down to, you know, cut, cut a couple of minutes off of it. So, not too shabby. All right, so that's part one. That's the base. All right, the top. Let's come back in here. Let's turn our base off, our dimensions off, and turn our... Um, All right, these guys got moved because I didn't make my layer active move back over to the base layer. It got moved over to the top layer because when I was drawing, my top layer was bolded up here. Don't do that, guys. All right, so on my top here, I'm going to go ahead and get this onto the board. And I'm basically going to move this over snap to the corner here snap to the loom my darling even though my board size is reading you know 23 inches and my top piece is not 23 inches it's all right i'm starting from the bottom left corner so um i don't need to adjust my board size <coughs> i can still lay this out and everything now on here First things first is, uh, you know, we've got some uh, 
rabbits that we've got to worry about and all that stuff. So I want to make sure that my uh, holes do not interfere or hit with my rabbits and all that stuff. And um, that uh, these guidelines here are going to help me do that, right? And uh, you know, I'm just snapping my guideline, snapping my guideline and uh, create a relative guide. This is moving to the left. I need a guide on the left side, so that's a negative number, right? And I'm gonna drag a guideline down here and snap down here. And I'm going up, so it needs to be a positive number. Going up. So left is negative, right is positive, up is positive, and down is negative when you're doing things like that. All right, so I've got my guides. This is basically where the edges of my side pieces, my board and everything, that rabbit that this top is sitting into. So I need to make sure that my holes stay clear of that. So first things first, we got a diameter of 1.75 for these curved Ks, you know? And let's go ahead and just get one on the board. All right, notice my base layer is active. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna make sure that I turn that base back off and make sure your top is active, your top layer when you're drawing. And that's what we're working in. That's why that base, uh, all those base vectors pop back up here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position this one, kind of get it to where I want. And, and this is the lid that it fits it into. And then of course, you know, it has that, you know, the top has a lip on it. So I wanna make sure that uh, I'm, you know, a good distance away uh, from that uh, lip and everything, whatever the case may be, and everything. So my so my part fits in there and all. So let's. Uh, and I'd like to have it somewhat centered. That line just gave me a snapping point just to make sure that I'm nice in position. And if I were to measure, I should be, should be, should be, should be, should be. I should be positioned, uh, you know, roughly uh, the same distance. And I'll probably make it a half inch even. Um, but let's see, let's see how off, off I am. Oh. Almost perfect. So what I'm going to do is um, go into the Move tool. I'll select this here, and my absolute position is 1.644, 1.644. So I am positioned nicely, but my measurement was not quite, you know, right on one of these lines. I'm off. Yeah, I'm in instead of out on the edge there. So. So it was the right, they're both the right distance, but that's that's ridiculous to go an odd number like that. So I'm gonna go one point uh, six eight seven five one point six eight seven five. Click apply. That's where my first one's gonna be. All righty, Everdotty. Now I'm gonna take that guy there and let's go ahead and uh, create a uh, array, array of these across our workpiece. And so most likely, most likely, I'm only gonna be able to get um, one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna shoot for six by six. So six rows and six columns. And let's see how lucky we get. Uh, and then um, my gap or my offset in between from the left side of one to the left side of the other, right? Well, my Keurig K cup is, you know, 1.75 inches. So if I go 1.75 and uh, 1.75, 
I want to add some space, you know, a little whatever my gap is between them. And I, I'm thinking a half inch, you know, would be fine. So um, we'll do that. You know, so that's two and a quarter, and this should be two and a quarter as well because they're, you know, it's equal distance. And so if I copy this, all right, so I could actually get another row and another column with that spacing. But I have to remember something. There is a lip, right? There's a lip. And I believe that lip is probably maybe a 16th or an inch round. So is my spacing enough that when two curved cups are side by side that there's, you know, they're not bumping each other, right? You're not hitting each other and everything. I believe I am safe with that half inch gap between them all. But let me get, let's undo that and let's get uh, seven and seven, seven and seven. Okay, and overshot it. All right, so I'm not gonna be able to get seven and seven. I thought I could. I'd have to get closer to my edges and stuff, but no, let's not push it. Undo. We're gonna go six and six, and then I'm just gonna increase my spacing. I'd like it to look uh, you know, somewhat even. So I'm gonna add another uh, quarter of an inch in between theirs and just make this 2.5 by 2.5. So it's basically my 1.75 plus three quarters should give me my 2.5. Okay. So if I copy this, that gets me where I want to be. And then uh, let's go ahead and get rid of the guidelines. Let's hide the guidelines so we can see our part. All right. And, uh, you know, on my length, I wonder, let me see, I might be able to go an extra row at least. Nah, that's fine. Uh, I'll, um, oh, I know perfect, guys, I know perfectly what we'll do. I will ask, uh, uh, I'll have to ask Sam what her favorite uh, curves are because we pretty much stick to what we have and all, but I know that I will V-carve in the top of this lid, Cinnabon on these two rows right there. That, I'm gonna claim these two rows right here. Cinnabon. So that's gonna be. <laughs> so I'll probably do some V-carb text here, identifying the name of the copy. Now, if you don't want to lock yourself in, right? If you don't want to lock yourself in to where these uh, cups and everything are, then don't engrave a name in there. But I'm willing to take the chance. So I'm gonna, I've got these grouped together because I want to hold down this rectangle here and I want to center those uh, curd cups in this uh, part here. I want to make sure it's centered. And I want to back it up, just these. I want to back them up just ever so slightly. If I turn my guidelines on to make sure I'm not getting too close to my edge there. That leaves me plenty of room up here to do some nice little V carving, whether I do long ways or horizontal, you know, horizontal or vertical. Uh, you know, like remember, because we're gonna be we're gonna be standing here uh, looking into the drawer, so I'd probably want to read the names, you know, horizontally and all of those different cups. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I'll let uh, I'll let uh, Sam decide what if we're gonna do anything with that empty space or just leave it be. Leave it be. You know, you don't have to fill every single space in everything, right? Okay, let's go ahead and knock this out and then let's get over to the most important part, our sides and everything. So let's go ahead and um, <clears throat> we're gonna do a profile cut. And again, I'm gonna have a uh, uh, some double side tape under here. And I'm not too concerned I'm not going too concerned about these little discs, right? So I'm not gonna sit there and fill my whole bottom with double side tape to make sure all those discs get held in. I'm not too concerned with these little quarter inch thick discs. If they were three quarters of an inch or something like that, and I was worried about the part being moved uh, because of jamming my bit up and breaking my bit or anything like that, then I would you know, put tabs and stuff on these. But they're quarter of an inch thick, they'll just pop out of the way and everything. Uh, so I'm gonna have double side tape holding this down. So I'll be able to do a profile cut, profile cut, 
cutting that 0.25 inches deep with my quarter inch end mill on the outside of the line, outside of the line. I'm not gonna need tabs or anything. Um, I'm going to absolutely turn this vector off first and then click on it, make sure I click on it last because I am gonna use the order. I am gonna do the vector selection order and I'm gonna turn these off. That way it cuts my profile cut last even though it's double-sided tape and I could very well cut it first, I would still, I, 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 I wanna stay in the habit of cutting my profile cuts last, right? So uh, this is gonna be my uh, top profile. Um, K-E-U-R-I-G, Keurig, top. Profile cut, 0.25 end mill, name my toolpath there, calculate that out. Now the software is absolutely smart enough to know, even though that I've created this toolpath on the outside of the line, the software is smart enough to know that I have vectors on the inside of this border, so it is cutting properly on the outside of the line for that outside profile but it's reversing and cutting on the inside of the lines exactly as it should on these inside profiles, okay? So it's cutting on the inside of the line exactly as it should, all right? Very cool. Let's go ahead and calculate uh, that up and we can preview it out. Ah, let's... Uh, not on your base, let's reset the preview so it looks like a blank board. Do follow reset. <clears throat> there you go. And those little discs, like I said, I'm not worried about them jamming up my bit or anything like that. If they do pop up, they're gonna end up just, uh, you know, popping up out of the way and everything. Okay, so this will be my lid. Uh, these little discs, who knows, I might make a checker game one day and I've got the perfect disc for it. Need some Monopoly money, I can paint it silver or whatever. Um, oh, excellent, Lenny's got a very cool tip uh, right up here. The visibility of our guidelines where I've been going to the view guidelines and toggling the visibility on and off through the menu. Vetric and its fashion and everything has a nice little toggle button right here in the corner that I could click right in the corner to toggle the view on and off. Thank you very much, Lenny Lovell. I appreciate that. Awesome stuff, good to know, good tip to share with everyone. Let's go ahead and save this. File, save as, and we're gonna create a new job folder here, and it's gonna be called the K-U-R-I-G Organizer. Now the sides, there's gonna be a little bit of work we gotta do for our rabbits and dados and all that stuff. Not much, not much at all, uh, but uh, let's go ahead and, uh, this is my Keurig uh, top and base. All right, let's go ahead and save that. Excellent, excellent, excellent. <laughs> nice tip, Lenny. Very cool. All right, love it. Let's go ahead and let's uh, close this, file close. Let's go ahead and open up a new file. Now this new file is gonna be for my side parts and all. Remember, all of my parts are two and a half inches uh, tall. You know, most of them are, the others are shorter, uh, like my little dividers and stuff. And my little dividers, uh, those are uh, quarter inch material as well. So let's take a, let's, let's take a er, break for a moment. Hold on a second, hold on. Oh, don't let's uh, close this or yeah let's close this and let's go back into that curve top and base there for a minute hold it how many let me import some vectors real quick let me uh, cancel this turn this layer off add a new layer <clears throat> Let me import that design again. And my divider parts, 
these guys right here and this guy right here all this can go bye bye all this can go bye bye <clears throat> I'm going to turn on that uh, to, uh, top again, and I should be able to fit these parts in there, cut them as well. Yeah, I'll get them organized here in a second. Yeah. Forgot about those because those are also quarter inch material. Those are my little quarter inch material. The same material that my top and base are going to be made out of. Uh, these guys are going to um, uh, be made out of. And so, uh, let's see here. I've got a quarter inch bit that's going to be cutting this, right? So 0.25. And if I snap that bit right there and snap that to there when it's cutting that edge. If I bring this up, yeah, yeah. All right, let's select these three parts here. Select this part last, go into our alignment tool and align left and right and just bring all them into alignment with one another. Uh, as far as spacing, I, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, if I wanted, if I want to minimize waste or anything like that, but now I can go back into my profile toolpath here, and I can add those into the mix. Now these parts, um, since three sides are going to go into a rabbit and all that wonderful stuff, I will add little tabs on them. They're they're a little bit bigger part, uh, but they're only going to be a sixteenth of an inch tab. And I will throw a tab here and here. I don't think I don't think that tab is going to be effective on the left side unless I unless because I know it's not going to be effective on the right side. And I only need two tabs just to hold it in place. Let me get out of this and close that. Uh, if I move these back a little bit, then calculate this. Let's see if those tabs are even effective at all. Preview the selected toolpath. Yeah, and what I want to make sure I do, the vector selection order that I chose here, uh, because this part is getting cut free right here first, because I just added these last, right? Uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that I come back in and select all of my circles, select these boxes, and then select this vector last, the big profile cut, um, and everything. Even though, again, even though it's double-sided tape, I still want that to be done because of the simple fact uh, that I do, you know. Uh, I'd like to cut this big profile and cut this big piece loose last. So, all right, so that's gonna be my all of my little thin quarter inch parts. And now, once again, we can save this. And of course, we would go in and we would save our tool pass under the save tool path. Uh, use your appropriate post processor for your machine and both of these toolpaths use the same bit, so I can export them out as one file. And because I'm only running one file to cut both of those, but right, they're both two separate parts. So turn that one off. Only you got to save them separate. We got our lid, our base. Let's rename this. And I thought I named this one, but I didn't rename. This is my base. Pocket cut, 0.25 mil. But if they were the same part and they use the same bit, you could 
save them together but don't do it on this kind because it's two separate parts so we, we would save them separately okay and uh, let's go into our current organizer and I'm gonna save that one uncheck that check that off and save this one great now as long as I have this checked up here then whatever toolpath I want to save I will check it right I'll check it but if I do not have this checked up here, then I need to select the toolpath. I need to select the toolpath that I want to save. Otherwise, checking won't do anything for me. It'll still be the same toolpath that I'm saving no matter what's checked, right? So if you got this checked, you use your check marks, your check boxes. If you have it unchecked up here, then you select the toolpath you want to save. All right, let's go ahead and let's uh, click save to update our changes and close this file. And we're going to knock out uh, all the rest of our parts real quick and then we'll be done. So we're going to uh, close this, create a new part. Now, <coughs> all of my parts are uh, two and a half inches tall or less. Um, most of them are all two and a half inches tall and everything. So uh, I could get, if I did uh, a one by six, that's a one by six, you know, that's five and a half inches wide. I could get uh, my, all of my parts, you know, a few of my parts side by side. And uh, that'll minimize some of my pieces. So I'm going to go with a five and a half inch wide piece that is three quarters of an inch or a half inch thick, not three quarters, half inch thick. And the length... Uh, my current, uh, you know, uh, whole overall base was uh, 23 inches, and then of course a quarter of an inch on each end, so a half inch. So, uh, you know, 22 and a half would be the my longest piece. Well, I am going to just make this an even 24 inches, you know. And uh, again, material surface, uh, machine bed, I'm sorry, is the Z0. I am working from the bottom left corner, right? I'm gonna click OK. And we're gonna import those vectors again. And I don't need my top and that uh, those little divider parts. I don't need the base. These are the only parts I need, okay? And these parts are grouped together, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to, and uh, just to verify my length, make sure I made my board size right, if I look at this, I should be around 22 and a half, right? 22.45, so, all right. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna nest these. Now, if you have Vectric VCarve desktop, you don't have nesting, you would just move these parts onto your board, you know, and you would uh, have one, two, three, four, five layers, uh, and you would create different layers um, for each of your toolpaths, you know, each of your parts. For uh, VCar Pro and Aspire, we have nesting, right? So nesting will allow us to it'll kind of it'll be an automatic thing, and it'll lay out our boards for us. And so I'm going to be using a, a quarter inch diameter tool to cut these parts. Uh, clearance, I don't need very much clearance between the parts because only one, uh, one or two parts are going to fit in each one. So I'm going to go uh, 0.0625, a sixteenth of an inch. And um, the border gap, how far I want them away from my border I'm only, you know, I really, they can go right up against the border for all I care, but I will, I don't know, uh, let's go a sixteenth of an inch uh, for chits and giggles. All right, so on the rotating the parts, well, they're not going to get rotated, so, uh, you know, rotate, it can rotate if they need to up to 90 degrees, and uh, we're going to click preview, okay? So... With that gap, that border gap of a sixteenth of an inch, it's not letting my me get two parts out of one cut. So I'm going to reset that, and I'm going to change my border gap. I'm going to let it go right up to my border because I am double side taping this. I have no clamps in the way. 
I'm not, oops, that's gonna be zero. I can, it can go right up to the border and I can go ahead and preview. You little bugger. So, my clearance is kicking my butt. Do I really need a clearance? On these, I will put a double side strip tape there, a double side strip tape there. It'll hold the part and the piece. I'll put two pieces on each one, so I don't need any clearance. Okay. So. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five pieces, five times 24, uh, four times four, uh, that's more than an eight foot board. I don't wanna do it that way, so I'm gonna adjust my board width. Instead of a one by six, uh, I'm gonna go with a one by eight, and that'll make this seven and a half. <coughs> Click okay. Select my parts here. Go to my nesting, quarter inch bit. I will give myself a little clearance now. And uh, I should be able to put a border gap in there now. There we go. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. All right, since I have a lot of room here, uh, I can increase, let's undo that, or I could have just said reset preview, but let's uh, give myself a little bit more room here. Let's go, uh, let's go three, eight. Spread those apart a little bit. There we go, that's good. All right, so basically we have three uh, 24 inch sticks of one by eight that we're gonna be cutting these uh, parts out of, right? So uh, we'll start with our sheet one, which is our active sheet right now. We'll kind of work on this. So my router bit is going to be cutting this uh, <clears throat> dado here, and then it's going to be cutting this rabbit along the back side of my top part here. Now, when when hey, let me ungroup this. Uh, let's go ahead and let's hit uh, cancel to close out of that. But if we ungroup these parts here, uh, you'll notice that when um, Vetric brought this uh, part in, this half inch part it created some extra vectors, right? So it actually created a vector that is this shape here of this rabbit. So literally, if I move that up, you'll see that, you know, that shape of that rabbit cut and stuff and all. And then it's got this box, right? Which kind of represents that, you know, the thick part down there. And then it's got, you know, this box, which represents the thick part there. And then of course, it's got the bottom side of my board, right? That's my pro, that's gonna be my profile cut. So it actually kind of brought in, you know, this one board in three different ways. So let's undo that, get back here. And what I want to do is I'm actually going to use this vector to my advantage because, because I need my router bit, just like before, to overlap this edge here to be able to overlap this edge here when I do this pocket cut and stuff. And, uh, you know, so I wanna kind of uh, size it up. So now, I can pull this up, you know, this way, but look what happens. It pulls just, you know, pulls both of them. All I'm doing is I'm sizing this whole part, you know, from the bottom here to there. That's not what you wanna do. You want to, we gotta go into node editing, and I'm going to, cut my vector on this corner here and on this corner here and that way I can move this span up I'm just gonna use the arrow keys on my keyboard just a small amount not much not much you know and also if I go into node editing and I cut this vector here I'm gonna move this line outward a little bit Okay, <clears throat> and now I can come in 
on my part and I can use my extend tool and I can extend my line back out to here. I can extend my line back over to here. I can come over here and extend my line back up to there. And now I've just created my pocket vector, my pocket vector for my toolpath, but I got to join. Even though I extended the line out, it did not join the parts together, right? It extended them too, but I got to use my join tool to take those three individual vectors I have selected and join them together as one. All right. So basically, if I delete that extra rectangle vector that was created right here, if I delete that out and I come over here and hold down my shift key and delete this square out that it that brought in, and I'll do it again down here so you can see, I should have two vectors now, my pocket cut vector here and my profile cut vector here. That's it. I don't need those other two. They're just, they're junk. Okay. They're junk. All right. So down here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to select our vector, which is that part there, that little L shape. We're going to go into node editing mode, or you can hit your letter N on your keyboard. I'm going to cut the vector here cut the vector here and I'm also going to cut the vector there coming out of node editing I can take this little piece and I'm just gonna bump it out a little just a little bit that my bit can get over that edge you know and give me a nice flat edge I'm gonna take this one and bump it down a little bit use my extend tool and extend that line back to here extend this line over to here and then I'm going to extend this line back up to there. And then I'm going to make sure that I hold down my shift key and select all of my vectors again and simply join those three vectors together as one. Now that I have those three vectors and all, I don't need, I don't need this rectangle, that extra rectangle that Vetric brought in from SketchUp. And I don't need, and what I'm doing is I'm selecting, because this rectangle is on top of my, you know, border cut basically, I'm selecting both of these, right? When I write, when I draw from right to left, it's selecting both of those vectors. And then I'm holding my shift key and coming out here or in here, either place, and I'm selecting that way it deselects that border one and only leaves the little rectangle selected. And then I can just simply right click and delete or just hit delete on my keyboard. So now once again, I should have two tool paths or two you know vectors. Now, when that router bit is coming, it's able to come over here and clean up this edge and it's able to come you know, over here and clean up this edge, but we got one more edge, right? Right here when that, when it comes out, it's gonna leave a little radius. And what, what's gonna happen? Why are we extending these lines out? Well, imagine if I'm using a quarter inch bit to pocket this out. If I do not extend out past my borderline, when that router bit is coming and cutting, coming and cutting, it's gonna stop at that boundary and then it's gonna start moving over here, right? But what does that do on my two corners? It leaves two little radiuses that I would have to clean up with a chisel right? We don't want to do that, you know? So what I want to do is I want to make sure that I extend, that I extend my line. So I'm going to go into node editing and I'm going to cut the vector here. Actually, I'm going to just go into node editing. I'm not even going to cut the vector. I should be able to grab those three nodes and bump them out a little bit. Not much. Be done. Same thing here. Grab those and bump those down a little bit, <clears throat> you know? So that way we overlap and that way it creates that nice pocket. Okay? All right. All right. Now, just for those of you that are visual folks, I am going to not do that. I'm going to take uh, this and I'm going to 
bring this back to this edge and I'm gonna create the pocket cut both ways so you can see what I'm referring to. I know you probably know what I'm referring to, but let's just get her done. So for sheet one, and I'm doing one sheet at a time, so this is gonna be a pocket cut and it's cutting a quarter of an inch deep on my half inch boards, quarter of an inch deep. And I'm using a quarter inch uh, end mill. I've got my end mill set to a 16th of an inch per pass. I could take an eighth of an inch very easily, but I, I'm not an aggressive cutter. So I just, you know, I run a 16th. So it's going to do four passes and I'm okay with that. You know, it's not going to take very long. So I'm going to select, uh, let's get out of uh, node editing mode. The escape key on your keyboard can get you out of your tools real quick. With those selected, I'm going to calculate this tool path. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and select these two vectors and create my profile tool path, my profile tool path. And this is going to cut the full half inch all the way through same quarter inch end mill, uh, outside of the cut. And I will be adding tabs to this. So, and these tabs are going to be a 16th of an inch thick quarter inch wide. And I'm going to put one here, one here, one down over here and one on this side. Could have probably just got away with two, one on each end, but you know, uh, let me see here. That's my top. That's my top. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of this one. And I'm going to move this one down here. And this guy here, I'm going to move him down to the bottom. Move him over even with that. All right, that'll be enough tabs for that, for those three tabs on each one. And I'm going to add some ramping here. Do a one inch uh, zigzag ramp. And this will be my sheet one or board one, but it calls it sheet one. So I'm going to stick with it. Right. Uh, and this is, uh, my side parts. However you name your tool pass, whatever you want to name them, name them. And it's a 0.25 in mill. Calculate. Now let's take a look at this cut. Let's preview all the tool pass here. Get that profile cut cut out. And the reason why it's a little slow on the preview is because I am uh, running a higher uh, pixel radio, radio ratio preview and everything. Okay, so let's turn this to the side and let's take a look at what we've got here. So on my parts, on my parts, by not extending the vector out past the line, I've got these radiuses here and this little skin of wood where my router bit just barely skinned there. And now I'm going to have to, I would have to come back and clean that up with a chisel. I don't have a nice square cut because the bit wasn't allowed to go past that vector line, you know? And so I ended up when that bit turned that corner, you know, cause it was restricted there. Uh, it left these nice little radiuses here in the corner that I'm going to have to straighten out with a chisel if I don't do it now, uh, you know, in the software. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to, uh, go into node edit mode, grab those three nodes and I'm just going to extend them out ever so slightly. And I'm going to sit there and recalculate my pocket cut. So that way I get that nice clean square cut. Okay. That's why we extend the lines past our edges. When that profile cut comes out, we want nice clean. So our joinery is nice and clean. We don't have to clean it up. We don't have to do any cleanup. Okay. So that's my two side parts. All right. So now that we know basically what we're doing here, uh, let's go ahead and switch over to uh, open up our nesting tool and switch to sheet two. 
That's going to move sheet one up here out of the way, and we got sheet two. Sheet two, I've got these vectors here. Let's ungroup everything. Everything is grouped together. Let's ungroup everything. Ungroup. I've got these vectors here, and these are individual. They're not rectangles in here. There is a rectangle in there, but if you notice how these vectors are, this is that rectangle, right? So I could double click on that. Close, always close your tool. I could double click on that and I could simply hold down my shift key and it will extend that rectangle. What's happening? Oh, I'm dragging. <laughs> Don't drag there, buddy boy. Grab that, there we go. Uh, it'll extend that vector, and I just want to go a little bit past my profile cut because this outer border is my profile cut, right? And so, but now, this one, hold down the shift key. I'm just extending it out past this one. I'm double clicking on it, putting in transform mode so I can hold my shift key. This one, and just a small amount. Don't need to go past it very much, right? Just a small amount. Okay. Now, on my rabbits here, on my rabbits, the rabbits, I got to be careful that I don't mess up my, 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 my rectangle or anything, but I'm going to hold down my shift key and I'm going to extend it out just like that. And then I'm not going to hold the shift key and I'm just going to pull this edge out past the edge. That's it. Okay. Right. Right. Oh, okay. Same thing over here. I'm going to hold, I'm going to double click on this, hold my shift key for the top and bottom to extend both of those sides out a little bit and not hold the shift key when I extend this one up. Okay. But now if we look at this, if we look at this, um, I've got these solid lines here and then there's a dotted line behind, you know, right here, this solid line right here means that there's you know there, there's pretty much another vector going on i got rectangular vectors going on all over here and stuff so if i turn off my shift key or hold my shift key if i turn off that outside border you know there's a duplicate vector hiding right if i turn that off hiding right there that i don't know if you can see the pink above that orange let me change the layer color uh, let's change the layer color to black so you can see that maybe you can see that pink dotted line over that black there and all that rectangle. That's that. That's the, you know, when these rabbits are cut in, that's that high part, the thick part and all. Well, we don't need those. Delete them. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. What we should have is we should have our grooves, our pockets that are going to get cut for our grooves here, our vectors for our two rabbits on the end and then a profile vector that's it we don't need those other ones that's just miscellaneous stuff you know because the board is three-dimensional inside of SketchUp when it brings it in it's bringing in those you know that three-dimensional look even though it's a flat layout so we got to make sure we you know get that right now on this one there are two vectors uh, we've got this here we've got our three vectors again uh, we've got this inside rectangle here, and then we have our outer profile. So there's three of them. Well, this rectangle that I have selected here, again, delete it. Don't need it. We should have a profile all the way around, and then we should have our little pocket vectors. And once again, on our pocket vectors here, on this one, I absolutely do not want to sit here and pull on this, because what does it do? It pulls my rabbit out of place right on this one because it is connected all the way down to this end i need to go into node editing mode and i can take now and manipulate my nodes and i'll pull this down a little go into node editing i can slick so grab these two and pull that over a little bit right i can come up here and grab this node and this node let that go up a little bit and then these two nodes out here move those out a little bit and these two nodes here move those out a little bit so now I've got my pocket vector let's get out of node editing mode 
I've got my pocket vector that'll cut those rabbits and that groove across the top or the rabbit all the way around all three sides, should I say. Uh, and then I'll have my profile vector. So let's go ahead and create our tool path, okay? And um, let me see what this one was. This was my pocket. Let me rename this to sheet one. Pocket two. Okay. Just want to rename that because I'm going to go in here. I'm going to have another pocket toolpath <clears throat> for these guys and for this one. So we're going to have a pocket toolpath cutting a quarter of an inch deep, quarter inch end mill, um, offset cut. This is going to be sheet two pocket, 0.25 end mill, and done and done reset our preview and then we're going to have our two profile cuts two profiles to cut so we'll have a profile cut for sheet two and again whatever you name your tool pass you can name all right, uh, let's see, let's go 0.5, uh, call all the way through the material. Um, on the outside of the cut, I do want to add some tabs. So on this one, I'm going to throw, doesn't matter top or bottom, I want to kind of keep away from the, the top a bit. I'll throw one tab up here. On this one, that whole top is getting milled. Um, you know, a quarter of an inch deep. My tabs are only a sixteenth of an inch. So as a matter of fact, let me do that. Let me take this and move one tab down here. Put one tab in the middle here and one tab on the edge here. And then on this one, we'll go one, one, and one. All right, I don't want to do any sanding on the top. I want a nice clean cut on the top. And I'll, I mean, I'll do my 220 sanding before I finish kind of thing, but I don't want... I don't want to have to sand a tab away and take a chance of creating a divot or something in the top of my part. All right, let's go ahead and uh, calculate that out. Uh, let me go back in there. Let me put my ramp in there. Just doing a one inch zigzag ramp, calculate that. And so for those two parts, uh, let me turn my preview quality down. We'll go standard so it's a little faster. Um, <clears throat> That should rip through, you know. So again, by extending those vectors, gives us a nice clean groove. Dado, dado, dado. Groove goes with the grain. Dado goes against the grain. All right. So <clears throat> let's go ahead and final one. Let's go. Let's change the sheet three. Uh, this one's super simple. There's just a profile cut and these pocket cuts right here, right? So let's ungroup this, knock it out. Uh, let's take our rectangles here. And actually, I'm going to actually select all three or all four of these rectangles at one time and double click on them and put in transform mode. Hold my shift key down and I'm going to pull all of them at the same time. Right? A little time saver. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, select that one. This one, this one, this one, and this one. Oops, not that one. I'm gonna select those and then right in here, I'm gonna hold my shift key down and I'm gonna turn off that boundary. And that way all four of those rectangles or all five of those little rectangles that are, they're all selected, I can delete those. Because once again, I should have my four uh, pocket cuts and my one profile cut, very simple. All right, so uh, rinse and repeat. Let's do our pocket cuts first. Everything is rinse and repeat because the software remembers, you know, we're doing a quarter of an inch cut. Uh, we're, um, and as a matter of fact, that's wrong on this one. This is a 16th of an inch. So I gotta go back and fix uh, sheet two on the other one. Almost screwed myself up. Remember, this is my little divider, so they're only a 16th of an inch uh, on there. 
uh, quarter inch end mill and that's uh, sheet three. Got to go back and fix sheet two. Uh, sheet three pocket 0.25 end mill and let's calculate that. Reset that preview and create the profile cut. And this is going to cut all the way through. On the outside of the cut, we're going to add a ramp and we're also going to add tabs. And I'm going to, it doesn't matter top or bottom on this one. Uh, so I'm going to throw a tab. I'll throw two tabs on there. And again, this is sheet three. This is my final sheet. Profile, 0.25 end mill. Calculate that. All right, so if we preview that visible toolpath, I should end up with a little 16th of an inch uh, pocket cut there on those parts and everything. And so now I need to go back and I need to um, go back into my nesting here and I need to go back to sheet two because sheet two had the other part, right? That had the 16th inch deep grooves. And I pocketed it all in, they're all together in here. And that is not the case. Uh, these four, these four are only a 16th of an inch deep while the rest of the pockets are a quarter. So the rest of the pockets, we're gonna, we're, that's gonna be a quarter, but we're gonna create an additional tool path an additional pocket cut for sheet two for those four guys and they're cut they're only a sixteenth of an inch deep too many decimal points 0625 and this is going to be sheet two pocket two 0.25 in mil <clears throat> all right so that takes care of all of my parts. So I'll have a quarter of an inch um, cut on these, quarter inch deep pocket on these. I'll have a sixteenth of an inch deep pocket, which is this guy right here, and he needs to be moved up into the list for sheet two, nice and organized. And then I'll have my sixteenth of an inch cut. So we preview that repair, that little fix. Let's uh, not do that. Let's reset that preview and preview that again for sheet two. Okay, so that's it, guys and girls. That is the parts to cut out our and make our little Korg organizer, Korg organizer. Now this little organizer, once again, like I said, there's a divider. We've got some tea bags, uh, different types of uh, tea bags, green teas and things. Uh, crystal light little packets. They're long and narrow for uh, like juices or uh, whatever you want to call it, Kool-Aid, uh, even though that's a brand name. Um, the uh, um, sugar packets and uh, what have you. You know, and there's going to be two dividers or whatever for sugar packets or what have you, or one of these big dividers. We'll figure it out. We'll 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 get it laid out. But that is going to be the overall layout for this Keurig little coffee uh, cup holder. Uh, and it's going to fit right into the drawer underneath the coffee maker. And um, I hope that you got something out of this class. Now, on these sheet one, um, let me see what I got going on here. I got a pocket cut. That is, name should say sheet one, not sheet two. On sheet one, I should have a um, let me make sure I don't screw myself up now. Hoss. Uh, yep, sheet one, I should have a pocket cut and then I should have my profile cut and I'm going to rename this to keep things consistent. That's what was throwing me off uh, with the word side parts. Uh, this is profile. So I should have sheet one profile and pocket cut. Sheet two uh, has an additional pocket cut because of the sixteenth, the two different depths. One's a sixteenth and one's a quarter. 
but I've got my pocket and my profile and sheet three I've got my pocket and my profile so that takes care of all of the parts to cut out the framing of this and then um, let's go ahead and save this save as my design and let's go into my Keurig organizer and this is my K-E-U-R-I-G Keurig organizer frame work save that and so I've got my framework all the tool paths created if we are to close this and we go into our top and base. We've got our top and base parts, uh, our top there, and then our base here. And let's turn off these layers and turn that base on. So, and we've got our we've got two tool paths to run for that, uh, two little pocket cuts. And overall, if we add up some time here and everything, uh, let's take a look at how long this overall project's going to be. Now. I'm going to change my pass depth from a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth. I can be normally 50% the diameter of the bit or less. Okay. I only should need to take two passes because I'm doing a zigzag uh, ramp that's going to help me out and everything. Uh, my pocket cut should only be taking one pass. Wonderful. And so if we look at this, uh, we're about 28 minutes all together to make both the top and the bottom. So 28 minutes based on my speeds and feeds and my machine's rapid rate and everything uh, and my scale factor. So about 28 minutes uh, for the top and bottom. And then if we close out of this, save our changes, which I didn't like an idiot. Uh, let's go, I hit no instead of yes. But let's go to our framework and look at our timing for our framework. And basically, all three boards and everything uh, to knock out all three of all the framework. It's going to be about an hour, hour and eleven minutes. Uh, if we were to look at this individually, uh, sheet one is going to take about thirty-one minutes, uh, ten minutes for the pocket cut, twenty-one minutes for the profile cutting. <clears throat> And again, I could change my profile cut to take an eighth of an inch per pass and cut that down dramatically instead of a sixteenth of an inch per pass. And since I am doing ramping, I might as well do that. Let's go in and edit this. And I don't want to change it in my tool database. I just want to change it in my tool. Let's calculate that out. Same thing for this profile tool path. Edit. Change that to an eighth of an inch per pass with that quarter inch end mill. Calculate. And this profile tool path. And calculate. And then we should be able to look at our time. So Sheet one, about 21 minutes uh, to knock out sheet one. Sheet two, about 13 minutes. Nope, wait, there's one more pocket. Hold on a second. Sheet two, sorry, about 22 minutes for the uh, adding in the profile cut. And then sheet three, uh, about four minutes and 50 seconds. Okay, so not bad. Uh, 20, 40, 60, we'll call it, uh, an hour. And the other one was, uh, what I say? 48 minutes. So within a couple hours, weekend, nice little weekend project or something. Uh, you could have a really nice organizer, um, to, uh, for whatever, you know, in my case, it's going to be for my curd coffee cups. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this project. Uh, now's the time to ask questions. If you have any questions, now is the time. We're going to take uh, about 10 minutes to answer any questions you have, and then uh, we're going to call it a night. So let's switch back over to my wonderful pretty mug here. And fire away, guys. If you have any questions, now is the time. Yeah, Baron, go ahead and ask your question. Uh, unless you, uh, 
Baron, and you uh, you want to ask the question live, or are you were talking about calling and asking the question? Let me know. Either way. Yep. Now there's a little delay, uh, so I'm gonna sit here idle for a minute. I'm gonna take a sip of my apple juice. Apple juice. Live is fine. Life is fine. Life is fine, Baron. Life is wonderful. But live is fine. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and ask now. Baron's got a question about a modeling tab. A modeling tab. So if you got a question, uh, uh, when you now, let's go into the Vetric and let's go back over here, Baron. And you got to kind of, um, oops, you got to kind of uh, let me know. Let me get back into the screen capture here. In a profile toolpath, there is uh, what's called when you're when you're adding tabs and stuff. There's what's called 3D tabs here. If that's what you're referring to, or are you referring to the in the clip art gallery? Are you referring to the 3D tabs in the clip art gallery when you're working with models. So Baron, clarify that for me and then I can tell you about it. <clears throat> or in the modeling tab, I see a shield design that you can modify. In the modeling tab, um, hold on a second. Let's switch over here. Now, Baron, when you say modeling tab, I think of the modeling tab in my CAD cam. I see this right here. Are you referring to your clip art models? Clip art, there we go, all right. All right, so you're talking under panels and shields. Panels and shields. You said that you see a uh, panel and shield that you can modify. Baron, you have a Spire, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, you have a Spire software. You can modify any of these models. Um, if you have VCar Pro, oh, clip art shields, clip art shields. You're talking about the 2D vector clip art shields down here. Let me know now. Let me get down to the shields. Are we talking these shields or are we talking shields like a 3D model? So, yep, for rail and sweep. All right, so you're talking about, uh, so let's go into our 2D view. Uh, let's, um, here, let's do this. Let's go in, you have a spire. So let's go into a spire. All right, Baron, under clip art, for rail and sweep, okay? If I'm gonna do a two rail sweep, you know, for the rail and sweep and everything, then you're saying that in panels and shields, the 3D models, I'm not sure which design. If you have a panel number, let me know. 22V, you know, there's 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 so many. A shield, but let's go down to our... Let's see what we've got for shields. And my models may vary from yours, but... <clears throat> if you're, you know... <clears throat> This is the panel or shield or, or design that you can modify and it gives you three different profile options. So shield 1V. So let's, uh, let's get rid of this. Delete. And <clears throat> we go down to... Or, 
shield 1v. Yep. So what that is, is that is a vector, a set of vectors that you can use two rail sweep tool to create uh, a, a range. Uh, you've got three different profiles that you can choose from or a combination thereof. So what uh, what is your question, Baron? Let's get this centered on our board, F9. What's the question? Now that we know where we're at, what is the question? Because uh, basically this is used as a, you know, you can use utilize this as a two rail sweep function. You can even utilize it as a one rail sweep. Uh, a, a one rail sweep, uh, it basically creates the profile on the center line. So it all depends on your layout and stuff and what you're trying to do. Uh, let's say that I was using a two rail sweep and I have my two rails here. And that's my that's my selection. Now it's important that my rails are running in the same direction. And then I could pick whatever profile that I want. In this case, I'd probably choose this one. And um, it's gonna sweep, uh, scale between the cross sections, between these two cross sections and sweep between the two spans. And so when it sweeps around, let's go into our side to side view here. You know, notice the screw up, right? Notice how it does not combine very well right there. Um, you want to not do that, right? Want to see how to use it to make it. Okay. All right. So let's undo what we just did. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. All right. Let's clear our rails and clear our component, reset everything. All right. Generally, uh, with its being a closed vector, we would use a one rail sweep versus a two rail sweep. Okay. Uh, if we're going to do it between two vectors here, we're going to have to cut those vectors in this corner so that the parts uh, join up correctly. If you notice how it joined up with these being closed, it didn't, you know, it didn't kind of wrap around and everything. So let's do it as a one rail sweep first. And then we'll come back and do it as a two rail sweep. So let's grab this. Boop. And the one rail sweep, I'm going to open this up. And this is going to be my drive rail. Okay. And I'll use my first profile here. And uh, use vector cross sections. All right. So it's saying, uh, you know, select vectors in turn to use as cross sections uh, then click on a rail to attach them to right well or you have a choice of use as component well i'm using vector cross sections and all i'm doing is uh you know create square corners okay there is no between spans there is no between spans and i can apply this and I do my nice, you know, join here. Okay. Based on that profile. But look at it. It's inward, not outward. It's backwards, right? It's that that curve should be going outward towards the outside of my profile. So what we have to make sure that we do is in our um, uh, profile here, we need to reverse the direction and we can do that up here. Reverse the rail. Okay. So that way when it creates the part, it brings the curve outward like it should be. Right. So we want to reverse the rail. Now we're going to create a new component, a new component. And we're going to fill in the center area. So I'm going to grab that same vector again. I'm going to come out here and I'm going to go into uh, the create shape tool. <clears throat> it's going to be a flat shape and I'm building up the flat shape, whatever my height is here. So let's call it one inch on this vector there. And it's a merge, not not add it's a merge okay 
So one inch is not tall enough. Let's go one. There we go. And however you want your transition to go, I mean, I could go uh, 0.9283, 0 0.9283, and click apply. And I could adjust it a little higher until I get where I need to be. 0.93, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we'll get our, uh, let's go 0 0.9. What is my height here? If I put my mouse there, 9... Nine six four nine nine six four nine nine six four, which is one inch, but yeah, it's not nine nine six four. You booger. That's all right. We can move on. We don't need to be stuck on that. All right. So we've got that. Let's bring it down just a. Hair more, nine seven five. Okay. Now I can go into my uh, start a new component. All right, and that'll grayscale that, and then I can grab this rail and grab my next profile, whatever whatever order. I can use one, two, or three. I can use all of them, none of them, whatever the case may be. And again, go into the one rail sweep tool, use selection, grab my profile, whichever one I choose. And we're not sweeping between spans, but I do want sharp corners. That's what gives us our sharp corners here. So this is going to be a merge. I'm going to click apply. And again, the rail is reversed. It's in the wrong direction. We don't want it looking like that. So we're going to come up into here and right click and reverse the rail and click apply. There we go. And then if I want to start a new component, grab this uh, last rail out here, uh, use that as my path grab this third one here and apply again reverse the rail unless I want that look or something but let's reverse the rail and click apply and I want to lower the height of this last one so I'm gonna I'm gonna click close And I could, I could have limited the height in, in that actual tool there, but I'll just go into this last one's component and I'll go into the properties and the shape height, I'm only going to have it come up maybe three eighths of an inch. Um, let that reset so that, you know, I get kind of whatever, whatever look I'm going for. If I go a half inch, uh, point five oops too many decimal points point five let's build that up give it a second or I could go whatever um on this second one, this second component here, uh, that one, I want to lower that height. I want to go uh, point, uh, point 0.75. I just got to be careful. My corners are coming through here, and those corners are coming through on you know this 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 upper piece here uh and all so i gotta be i gotta be mindful of that those uh those two points right there 
uh, from the bottom piece are poking through. So, oops, oops. Let's, uh, let's change. Let's change them around. Let's delete number two, three. Or number one and three, sorry. Number one and three. Let's change them around. On number one, we'll use the number three profile, or the number uh, two profile, sorry. <clears throat> so let's go back into that one rail suite. Uh, with this one, we'll grab this profile and, oops, Grab this profile first, use that as your selection. Grab this and uh, merge, apply. You're gonna have to reverse the rail. Mm, do I wanna reverse the rail? Yes, I wanna reverse the rail. <clears throat> Click apply again. Okay. Nope, I had it right the first time. Don't want to reverse. Wait, it was already reversed. It's already reversed, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. And now I need to uh, take my first one. Uh, let's see here. That's create a new component. So line two. Line two is going to be the first profile. Apply. And I could scale to an exact height here, but I'm just going to go into the properties of it and do all my adjustments there. So um, this one is going to be down. We're going to go a quarter of an inch radius on that. Now let's go a little higher. Uh, let's go a half, 0.5. Point six two five. Oh, that's six hundred twenty five. It's gonna shoot out the table. Hold on a minute. <laughs> Point six two five. Oh, emergency. There we go. We're starting to get there. Uh, point. There we go. All right, and then just start, uh, we gotta be mindful of uh, one of our parts right here, the point sticking through. But now we can start kind of building our components up. This guy, number one here, he's gonna be reduced down, he's gonna be reduced down to point Point eight seven five, and then component number two is going to be reduced down to point eight seven five. And you can build the shield however you want, but that's you know that's kind of where you're going with it. Um, but you'll have to, whatever combination you use or adjustments you need to make, um, to build, you know, whatever your shape. I don't like, uh, this little internal divot right here. I don't know what part, which one that is. Is that number four? It's not number three. It's not number two. Number one. Number one is sitting a little light. And then once it's all said and done, then you'll go back and you'll resize the whole model to whatever Z height you need it to be. All right, so 
Give me two seconds. Almost done. <clears throat> now you got me wanting to. I'm an anal uh, this way. 0.625. Oops. This is 0.375. Got to see which one has my corners going on there. Okay, with that, now I want to do uh, number two one more time. Nope, not number two. Well, yeah, number two. But you see how number two is hidden behind these parts here? If I raise it too high, if I raise this one too high, you know, I, it really needs to be offset inward because I'm just building this inner area in. We shouldn't be using this vector for this center piece. Uh, that piece should actually be offset inward. Uh, a good half an inch so let's offset it inward 0.5 and create sharp corners and that should bring me right to the edge of my model and you know the grayscale if you're like okay where does this blend where does it not you know and all that stuff you can go into the object properties and you can turn the fading off okay so that way when you turn the fading off it always shows you in dark you know where you're at and stuff you know what i mean so that offset is a bit narrow so i'm gonna instead i'm gonna go undo Control z undo and i'm gonna go 0 0.375 and that's good and then this is the one that i'm gonna build up a flat shape to so Flat shape. That's the one I want to build up. And click apply. And then come on. There we go. And then I want to get rid of this component. Delete that. Don't delete that one. All right. So now I've got now my shield starting to look like a shield. Now this middle component here, which is number uh, three and number five. Let's see here. Number one. Number four. All right. Number four is my troublesome little child on these corner blocks right here um, it's overlapping so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my properties here and I'm gonna bring that up 0.5 there we go and on those two corners where that blend, that part, that molding and all blended it together, you know, the shape of that profile, uh, what I would probably do is I would probably modify this profile ever so slightly so it did not do that. Uh, but anyway, Baron, that's how you use that. Okay. That's how you use that. That's how you would use in your clip art, uh, if you have a spire, those white shields and panels and all those are kind of diy they give you the vector lines they give you the profiles uh vectors and you build it however you need know what i mean Vern? all right let's move on don't want to save the changes minimize that okay so let's go back up because we had um 
we had uh, Vern said, I missed the class on TNG. Is there a copy on Spindle TV that I can view? Absolutely, Vern. All of our videos are recorded on YouTube uh, forward slash youtube.com forward slash Spindle TV. All of our past classes are recorded. And you can watch them at any time. At any time. All right. All right. All right. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? If not, uh, that was a long explanation on that one. Baron, I hope you... I hope that helped you a little bit. All right. If not, Baron, uh, give me a call. We can always team viewer together, buddy. Right? That's one of the benefits of being a digital woodcarver customer. Uh, you can call me anytime, even after class or whatever. We can team viewer together and go through it one-on-one. -on -one. All right. Let me get back to here. All right, well, listen, uh, I've been away for a couple of weeks, and um, I appreciate you hanging out and sticking with me You know, while I was gone and everything. Travel kind of got in the way, so I couldn't have class the last couple of weeks. Uh, but we should be back on, on schedule and everything as far as getting back to Mondays. But I'd like to um, take a poll because there's quite a few of you in the class. And um, uh, is there a particular day of the week? Uh, is Monday been working for you, or would you prefer Tuesdays? Uh, would you prefer hump day, Wednesdays, kind of give you something to do in the middle of the week? Um, Fridays, Saturdays, Sundays are kind of off uh, as far as classes and everything, and I know that, you know, that's the weekends, you're off, you don't have to work or anything like that, but um, uh, the reason why those are off is because that's when I'm actually uh, making other content and everything, uh, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are open days, uh, let me know what day works out for you, and um, we can start. Uh, I'd like to take a poll and uh, consensus and stuff, and I'm going to be asking around. And uh, if Mondays uh, works for you, uh, as it always has been, that's fine. Uh, if you prefer something hump day or Tuesdays, let me know. Uh, but um, whatever it will be, we'll get back to our regularly scheduled program after that. All right. All right. Excellent. Thanks, everybody. Until next time. I'll see you soon. Let me know in the comment section about uh, what day, uh, the comment section of the video when it's posted. Let me know about what day you would like. All that wonderful stuff, guys and girls. All right. So, till next time. See ya. <laughs>I want to thank you for joining us tonight on Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. If you're watching Spindle TV on YouTube, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. You can find out more information about our training and products by visiting us at www.digitalwoodcarver.com.